So I just had an interesting situation in a Dollar General store that I feel is a good teaching moment. So I wanna share this while it's fresh in my memory. I get to this Dollar General and as I'm getting out of the vehicle, I feel this like quick little oppression from the enemy. And so I prayed on the way in saying, Holy Spirit, I make myself available to you for anybody in here that needs a touch from you, from, from Jesus. And so I go in, I get a couple of items, I get to the checkout. And the young lady at the checkout is rubbing her eyes and yawning. She looks tired. So I said to her, oh, are you tired? And she goes, yeah, I, I can't sleep at night. And so my first response to that was, I'm going to pray for you. It's kind of like, sometimes it's just like a pat answer from me because of having prayed for so many people. For over the last 12 years, I have prayed for at least 20,000 people one-on-one. -on -one. Not not in front of like a mega church. Uh, it's I've been mostly a marketplace minister, so it's one-on-one, -on -one, that many people. So when you minister to a lot of people, you gain, when you minister to a lot of people one-on-one -on -one, like that in the marketplace, you gain a lot of discernment, but you also can get like kind of like the, into this frame of mind or mode where you just give pat answers <laughs> and so I, I said i'm gonna pray for you and when i said that she didn't say anything and from and from my experience i i caught i that that caught me real quick there <laughs> she didn't say anything because i always wait for a response to when i'm when i say that and i so i said to her oh you don't you don't believe in the power of prayer and she goes to me well my mom prays for me in other words, in other words, if my mom didn't get me healed so I can sleep at night, and then then you're not. <laughs> it's it's typical answer from somebody who perhaps believes in the Lord but has no relationship, doesn't have any knowledge of the truth in them. They just assume that anybody that calls themselves Christian and prays for you if it doesn't work then there's nobody out there that's going to pray for you that it'll work <laughs> and so I said I, I began to like uh, teach her some things and as I was beginning I looked down and I see a tattoo on her arm <laughs> of, of uh, Jason the Friday the 13th thing and I was like okay so now, so the whole thing changes because now I see it's a teaching moment. So I'm not praying for her yet. I say, look, you see this tattoo on your arm? This is your problem right here. <laughs> it's like you are, you are giving attention to evil spirits. You're glorifying death. It's like, this is the problem right here. You cannot, you got to give your life to Jesus Christ and get the word of God in you and stop giving attention to this stuff. I said, why do you think people have nightmares when they watch scary movies? And then she says to me, well, when I watch scary movies, they put me to sleep. And I'm like, I'm like, that's the opposite of what you just said. She, she just said to me that she can't sleep at night, but when she watches, you know, she, maybe it's the truth. She, either she was giving me just a quick answer off the cuff that wasn't accurate, or it was accurate. Because demons, evil spirits, the devil is so crafty that he may, he's got her so bound that the only time he leaves her alone is when they're satisfied because they got her to watch a, a movie glorifying them at night. You understand? You see how the enemy works? It's like when, so when she watches a scary movie, then she can sleep because they'll leave her alone. So they, so they want her to watch scary movies. So they want to bring her to the place where the only time she gets good sleep at night is if they watch a scary movie glorifying them. So it's just incredibly evil. So perhaps she was telling me the truth. And so I just spent that time teaching her the truth because I if I could have I could have just told that in fact in fact, there are ministers that would say to me that'll watch this video and say to me, "Tom, just like just cast the demon out and that's it." It's like no you are so wrong. You don't even, it's like ministers that say that are immature young ministers that don't have the word of God in them enough and don't have enough 
uh, don't have enough experience in spiritual warfare. All right. Because uh, the moment I got to the counter or maybe even the moment I walked into the place, the demons were running because they want nothing to do with me. In fact, in fact, that's probably the reason why she was yawning and tired by the time I got to the counter, because the demons like like when somebody is yawning, it's like a sign of demons manifesting like like a person's about to get free from demons. All right. And so like they were already upset before I even said anything. So like I can care. I those demons were gone the moment I got to the counter. So it's not the answer when a person needs to repent and change their thinking, because the moment I leave, the demons come back if she's not convinced of what the truth is. And so if you've got a minister and it's it's a young minister that will say things like that, you just cast the demon out. You know, they it's it's arrogance because they want to like. Like, and I've had young ministers do this to me, even though I'm 56 years old, I've been a spirit filled Christian for almost 30 years. I've ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit for 12 years, over 12 years, having cast out demons from, from thousands of people. And yet a young minister will try and teach me how to do it. So that's pride and arrogance. So when you come across a young minister like that, that is saying something opposite of what I'm teaching right now, don't pay attention to that person because that person needs to repent and still, still needs to grow up because they're following hyper grace, greasy grace, all right? They don't know what they're talking about. The demon comes back immediately if the person is not repenting and doesn't understand the truth, okay? And so, so, like, it's, so it's an excellent teaching moment and so, like, I hope it, it helps you. So do me a favor. Go into the the description box of this video to the link to the website, www.carvelboxchurch.com, and visit our website often. Bookmark our website because of the Christian censorship. I'll be using the website more and more. I've got a blog on there with information that is not found anywhere else. I've got three, three videos on the website right now that are not on the YouTube channel, and I'll be adding to that. And there's, there's a gallery, it's called Pick, that's the page. So there's many pages on there that you, that's, uh, so do that for us because we're full-time ministers. And if you're led by the spirit, if your heart moves you to sow into the ministry, do so. We're full-time ministers. We preach the the balanced word of God, rightly dividing the word of God and doing the work of the kingdom, not hyper greasy grace, not legalism. So people go from one extreme to the other. So anyway, God bless you. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching.